Today I show how you can connect Webflow forms to the automation tool make.com. And we are going to set this up in a way so that the form data does not get sent to the Webflow server. So Webflow never sees this data, but instead we send it straight to make.com so that we can kick off any type of automation which we want to run. Additionally, we will use a technique so that when the form submission happens on the live website, it will look like a native Webflow form submission to the website visitor. This means that we will be able to style and use all of our Webflow form states, like the success message and also the error message. We can use that and it will work exactly like with a normal Webflow form. The only difference is that the data gets sent straight from the Webflow form to make.com, where we can then kick off any type of automation which we want to run. So that is the idea and that is what we're going to do today. Okay, to get started, I have uh, this Webflow project right here. It is a super simple Webflow project. The only thing that it has is one page. And inside of that page, we have this uh, one section, the hero section. And inside of the hero section, we have this contact form. So nothing special, just a simple Webflow form. Let's start with a little bit of preparation. So to achieve the functionality I just described, what we have to do is we have to use a FinSuite attribute called form submit. This is a free JavaScript solution that we can use on our website. And this will enable the functionality that the form submission looks like a normal and native Webflow submission, even though we're sending it to make.com and not to the Webflow form processing. The link to that is finsuite.com slash attributes slash form dash submit. I will also put a link to that into the video description. To add this functionality in step number one, what we have to do is we have to copy the script to the Webflow page. So I click on copy script here. Then I go back to the Webflow project, open the page where the form is located and then go to the page settings. I scroll down and then inside of the custom code section where it says inside the head tag, I paste this and then I click on save. Next, I select the form itself and then I go to the settings panel up here at the top right and scroll down all the way and add a new custom attribute. In this case, I'm going to give this a name fs-form submit dash element and the value is form and then we require a second attribute which also has the name of fs fs dash form submit dash enhance and the value is true so these are the two attributes that we need for this functionality and uh, you will also find a detailed documentation about all of the required attributes here on the page, but in our case, we only need these two. Okay, so that's the first preparation. We're done with that now. And now we can go to make.com. I'm going to go to my dashboard and then I can create a new uh, scenario. If you do not have a make.com account yet, so make.com is a, an automation tool, you can just go to make.com, M-A-K-E.com, then sign up log in this takes about 20 seconds until you're done with it and then you will also be redirected to this dashboard then you can click on this purple button at the top right called create new scenario which means that we're creating a new automation scenario is just a different word for automation and let's be organized here so i'm going to give this a name and i'm going to call it webflow form to make.com webhook then i click on the plus icon and search for webhook. There it is, webhooks. This is a built-in module built into make.com. And then I select custom webhook. This will be the trigger for any type of automation that we run after a form submission. And a webhook, if you don't know it, a webhook is basically just a very custom URL with an ID. So it's custom to you, to this specific automation where make.com will listen for incoming data and if there is incoming data, it will use that data to run any type of automation, to trigger any type of automation. And the incoming data in our case will be the data from our form submission. To create a new webhook, I click on this add button and then I give it a good and descriptive name, my contact form webhook. And then I click on save. Now it has created the new webhook. You can see the webhook URL, the webhook link right here. So this is where make.com will listen 
to the incoming data. The problem right now is that uh, this webhook does not know the data structure of our form. So it does not know that the form has a first name, a last name, email, and phone number and message field. So we have to show it to make.com. And that is why there's already a text being displayed which says make is now listening for the data and will determine the data structure automatically. To initiate this, please send your data sample to the webhook address displayed above. And this basically just means that we now have to do a test submission to show make.com what is our data structure of the form. So I copy this URL by clicking this copy address to clipboard button. And then I go back to Webflow and paste this here in the action field. So where it says action, I paste this. And then I switch the method from get to post. I already had it set to post, but uh, you have to switch it from get to post. And then I publish the entire Webflow project. Now it is published and I can go back to the live site, reload the live site, and let's do a quick test submission. Mike test, test at example dot com one two three four whatever is my phone number hello there is my message and then i submit the form and now you can see we get the native webflow success message and if we look here at the chrome dev tools uh, you don't have to understand all of this i just want to show you that it works here you can see we have a new submission or new request as we would say and if we look at it the request goes to this webhook that we just created with the custom ID. The request method is post. This is what we configured in Webflow as well. And the status is 200. This means the request has been successful. So the data was successfully transmitted to make. And now let's take a look. Here in make, we already get the success message successfully determined. So now make knows which data structure our form has. And we can use that in the automation actions. So I click on OK, and then you can now create any type of automation. So now the data would be received with this webhook, and you can, for example, create, let's say I'm going to add the Webflow module, and based on that incoming form data, I could create a new CMS item. So whenever someone submits data through the form, this form submission would be stored in the CMS. So I could set that up here if I wanted. But you could also run a million of other uh, automations. This is just, I just want to show you the general idea of how to get the data from the Webflow forms to the custom webhooks in Make. And then based on that, you can trigger any type of automation action that you want. Important, after you have finished your automation, don't forget to save it. And um, then after you saved, click on on to turn on the automation. Right now I can't turn it on because um, this is not completely configured. But in your case, once you complete your automation, just turn it on with this button here and then the automation will be live and will always listen to new form submissions. So that is the general idea how to connect Webflow forms to make.com automations. Now, as a little side note, if your form requires additional advanced functionality, like for example, logic, branching, validations, calculations, or even multiple steps, then I can recommend you to watch this video that I've recorded a few weeks ago on how to create really cool and advanced multi-step forms in Webflow. So you can click it and watch it right now. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike and I wish you a great day.